Hi, this is Kathleen from Sunny Mountain Patterns. This is the tutorial to make the Japanese knot picnic bag that holds takeout uh, and a whole bunch of other things, including a plane. Uh, I should preface that, a toy plane. We're going to start off by putting the two linings wrong, right sides together and the two self fabrics right sides together and stitch the tops. I'm sorry about my head being in the way. I'm short and the camera was high up. So we're going to stitch together the uh, shoulder straps, the tops. This is the liner and this is the self fabric. So you actually want to stitch um, both sides and then if you're doing the Japanese knot style, you want to match the long straps, the long straps right sides together of the lining and the self fabric. If you're just doing uh, the even height, you're fine. Don't worry about it. So we're going to actually put them uh, right sides together and flatten out the seam so that we can go ahead and reduce the bulk when we're sewing. We're going to sew the inside oval of the straps first. Of course, note here you do want to match up the seams for the lining and the fabric because you definitely want those to match up. Um, if you cut them correctly, they should be exactly the same size. Sometimes I like to cut all four layers at the same time, uh, but depending on the thickness of your fabric, that might get you into some trouble because Maybe do that. So here I said to set the pins at right angles to the oval. That's to keep the curves from shifting when you're sewing. Um, I like to put in the sewing machine so that the right hand side, you can see that, uh, it sticks out inside the arm. And also please note, no toddlers have been harmed in the filming of this, even though I had to gently nudge him away multiple times. Uh, the 90 degree angle of the pins also makes it easier to take out. So after you sewed, you want to notch the curves. Uh, you want to make small triangles. Please don't clip the sewing. You'll be super mad at yourself. This is so that the curve sits very nicely when you uh, turn the fabric right side out. So speaking of which, we're going to flip the self fabric to the other side of the lining so that the wrong sides of the lining and the fabric are facing each other. So the right side's facing out. And then we're going to press. Um, this is really critical to make it look nice. Uh, you can try to get away with it if you're really good without pressing, but trust me, pressing makes it look so much nicer. And then top stitch about a quarter inch from the edge. If you're really good at top stitching, you can do an eighth of an inch. Uh, I'm not so good, which is probably why I don't make to sell. Once you're done with that, we're going to prep the pockets because we need to put the pockets on before we sew up the sides. So these are the two types of pockets, three technically, the round one and then the drink pockets. So there's two different sizes of the round one, which is the long and the short or the tall and the short. That's what we're going to start with. So we're going to do the pockets. Now you need to stitch around the U shape of the oval pockets or the round pockets, not the flat part because the flat part's what we're going to flip out right side out. Uh, this is the same for either the long or the short one. And then we're going to prep the drink pocket by doing my <laughs> elastic hack, which essentially is just encasing a string inside the fold over. Um, you're going to fold over twice, half inch each time, but make sure the string doesn't get caught up and then sew that in and then let the magic happen. You also need two uh, safety pins for this, for this little hack. So back to the pocket, we're going to put it right side out or e evert it and then press and then do our, uh, you know, use a chopstick or something to <laughs> make it round and then fold over the top uh, half an inch and then top stitch that closed. Now it's time for my elastic hack. 
So we have the string here. You're going to safety pin one end of the string to the elastic and then safety pin the other end of the elastic to the bag or just safety pin it because you're going to pull it through. Trust me, I've done this before and then you're all mad because you got to do it the hard way. Well, now that you're at this point, uh, you're going to start pulling the string and guiding the safety pin in with the elastic. Make sure that the other side has a safety pin or else you're going to pull the elastic all the way through like I just mentioned. And then voila, you're done. Uh, you do need to tack these down on both sides to make sure the elastic doesn't spring inwards and then you totally lost the elasticity of the pocket. But other than that, you're done for the pocket. Um, top part, and you gotta do the bottom, which is the pleats. Uh, I have two half inch pleats, but you can of course distribute them out a little bit more if you want. In this case, if you want just the half inch pleats, go ahead and use the notches. I just make little tiny notches inside the fabric instead of cutting downwards. Um, but match up the notches and if I could just center this on the camera that'd be great. For both of them you pin them in place you might want to um, top stitch not top stitch um, base them in place because we're gonna want to keep this together and then put it onto the fabric. So you need to make sure that one we have the placement if you have stripes or patterns you might want to match up the pattern now if you would like me and don't care then <laughs> proceed on. Generally I find about two inches for the short uh, round pocket is good below the handle, um, the bottom of the U of the handle. Uh, sorry, three inches for the short, two inches for the long. Uh, we're going to spread this out so that there's only one layer because you don't want to sew through two layers. And we're going to sew that U from left to right or right to left. It's your choice. Uh, about a quarter of an inch. I would also double stitch tack the beginning and end just for security. So for the drink pocket, we need to match up the center of whichever part of the fabric you're going to be um, stitching with the center of the pocket. So we want to align those two. You can kind of eyeball it. It's not super critical that it's perfectly in the center unless you're critical. In which case, go ahead and measure it. And then we're going to tack down um, basically between the between the <laughs> pleats. You don't want to do both ends because we just still got to tuck it uh, tuck it under to create the pocket. And then sew down the middle, and then sew left and right. Um, you can approximate this. It's elastic, so it's not like a huge deal if you're off by like a quarter of an inch or half an inch, maybe even an inch, depending how big. So again, you're going to tuck half inch on both sides and then sew from top to bottom. I would uh, tack doing forward and backwards on both at the top just for se extra security. It is a pocket and you are probably going to want to make sure your drinks stay in. Which by the way, I dropped a drink last week and I was not happy. It was a really good bubble tea. <laughs> but I had my kids with me so I wasn't going to turn around and go back in and buy another one. I just went without. So once you have all the pockets sewn on, you can sew the bag of the body, which is pretty much just putting the uh, self fabric right sides together and the lining right side together, and then sew the sides for both. Um, I sewed them separately, but I don't think you'd really have a problem if you just one in a line from the lining to the fabric.
If you have stiff enough fabric, you probably don't even need to use pins at this point. You just put it together. So it's just going to go down the line on left and right sides. You want to do both sides. Next, we're going to work on the bottom, and we're definitely going to sandwich uh, batting, half inch thick batting, between two pieces of fabric. You're going to want to quilt it, so you can use any pattern here. I've used hearts, but basically you need to make sure that the batting and the fabrics are held together. So diamonds are nice. I saw someone do a really cool um, recycle symbol, so you might want to try that. Uh, it's just pretty free form. I just use this a regular sewing machine. I'm lying. It's actually a quilting sewing machine, but I don't quilt, so I still can do it. Um, it should be working perfectly fine on any type of sewing machine you have. Once you have it quilted, just treat it like one single panel of fabric. It's just a little thicker. So we're going to attach the bottoms now, uh, respectively. So this is, we're starting off with the self fabric. Um, the lining is going to be a little different just because we need to be able to turn it. So with the self fabric, you want to make sure that you find this and notch the centers of the body and find and notch the centers of the, um, the square, the bottom, I should say it's square shaped just to let you know, super complicated. And then we're going to match up two of the knots centers with the center of the body and then match up the side seams of the body with the other center lines of the bottoms. Um, I think I started this off first. Now when you do get to the corners, uh, we're going to go from center out when you get to the corners you're going to want to make a little tiny uh, triangular pleat to get it around the corner as close to the corner as possible I mean if you want to have it a little bit more rounded you can make it more further away from the corner but it's definitely going to affect the shape So you just want to pin all around the bottom, basically from where uh, the centers are and the side seams around so that nicely, evenly distributed. And then once you have that done, you can go ahead and sew. I like to put the bottom onto the plate, um, the working table of the sewing machine, and then sew around the periphery, but it's your choice. Either will work. So this is what the bottom with the self fabric will look like. Now let's move on to the, um, the lining fabric, which is going to be a little bit different because uh, we are still going to do the centers. We're still going to find this bottom. However, there is probably about four and a half inches you want to leave along one length. Um, I'll put it in the middle just so it's easier to sew up when you're done so you can turn the, ba the bag right side out. So here you're just going to make a quilted bottom, but it will work exactly need the quilted bottom. I just have the quilted bottom essentially the same way. Think a pattern that's just a little thicker. And we're basically going to repeat exactly what you did for the um, the self fabric. So it's right sides together. You can see it's the wrong side of the lining. It's a little hard with uh, the quilted panel because I stupidly did not make sure one of them was wrong side out so you could easily see. But please note, if you've used right sides out for both the quilting panels, it's not a big deal. I just like to do this so it's easier to tell in the instructions. So again, make sure you leave some of the flat part, four to six inches. I don't know why I said four and a half inches. Four to six inches um, open. The wider it is, the easier it's going to be to turn. So 
So after you sewed it, we want to clip the edges um, just so it's a nicer shape and less bulky. And then we're going to reach inside that part that you didn't sew of the lining and pull out the body of the bag. And this should all be right side out now. And you can tuck the lining inside. Um, but before you do that, hold on. We have to sew up the that hole, well, which is just basically tucking in half inch and then top stitching. Now this is entirely optional. If you want a slightly more structured bag, where you haven't used sufficiently thick enough or uh, thick enough fabric, you go ahead and top stitch all of the edges. It's just a little extra work, but it does make a lot more difference on how how stiff the bag is or how much shape the bag holds on its own. Next, we're gonna do the handles, the outside handles. You're almost done. So you tuck in the lining and the self fabric a half inch facing each other towards the, in the inside, as it were, of the bag, toward the wrong side, and then pin in place and top stitch half a quarter of an inch. However, if you want to, please look up the burrito uh, technique. It's kind of tight, uh, especially if you do quilted bottoms, um, but I did make the handles a little bit wider so that you can use burrito technique. I might make a tutorial on how to do it specifically for this pattern uh, later, but that's that's design dependent, of course. So once you have it for both sides, you have done the bag. It's a completely reversible lined bag that will hold all of your takeout, lots of toys, lots of snacks, uh, drinks, like utensils, all sorts of stuff. So I really hope you like it. Uh, thank you for looking at my pattern and uh, hope you enjoy it. This is Kathleen from Sunny Mountain Patterns. Uh, that's my Etsy shop. I sell the patterns on it. You can go see the link below. So please check it out. Thanks.